Well, today's lesson, as you may already probably guess, is about leaves. They come in all shapes and sizes and colors. Today's lesson is definitely going to be about the different layers of leaves. So you can see this one right here. We're going to talk primarily about some of the covering, the dermis of, of the leaf. The leaves sometimes have hair, what we call pubescent, and sometimes they're glabrios, which means smooth. We're going to be taking a look at all the different layers today and be able to determine them as far as what they look like and what they do. There's a lot of different tissues you're going to be looking at today. Uh, the leaf is kind of like a sandwich. It has two outer layers and some layers in the middle, and each one of those layers is extremely important in terms of conducting the business of the plant. So let's go ahead and get started. We first of all want to look at the, the epidural layers. And the epidural layers uh, essentially are the, the bread of, of our sandwich I've, I've been talking about. You can see the upper layer, layer uh, is the upper epidermis and then the lower epidermis. Depending on the kind of plant it is, it, it'll have a little bit different structure. For instance, for instance, on, on cactus, uh, you're going to see a little bit different structures, uh, very thick cuticles. They're going to contain lots of, of moisture and, and water right underneath the, right underneath the uh, epidural cells. Whereas, like for instance, pears, you're going to see a little bit different structure. Uh, the, uh, the upper epidermis tend to be a little bit larger cells than the cells on the bottom. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, today as well. So if we're taking a look at this diagram first, you'll notice that this, this upper portion is called the upper epidermis. It's, it's usually a one, possibly two cells thick, depending on the plant. But they're very, very structured. Lots of, of cellulo cellul um, cellulose and lignin in it. Um, and so it's, it's very highly structured. For instance, on dicots, you're going to be seeing different kinds of structures up at the top and on the bottom. And um, for instance, on grasses, you're going to see uh, not only these uh, stomates and guard cells on the, on the underneath side, but also on the, um, the, the uh, outermost uh, part of the epidermis as well. But this cuticle is a waxing material that helps seal or uh, kind of cover the outside, uh, not only to uh, seal it from letting water out, but also letting water in as well. And so the cuticle is kind of a waxy substance, some pectin in it as well. Uh, but the thing that it doesn't have, it doesn't have any uh, chloroplast in it. This is primarily structural and for protection purposes. If you go down that one or two uh, cell layer next to it is these columnar types of uh, cells right here. And they're very rich in chloroplasts. These are the uh, kind of the engine of, of, the, uh, of the leaves. They're the things that are producing the, the sugars, uh, the, uh, the, um, taking in the CO2, uh, releasing the O2. Um, so that's why these are so green. When you see some of the slides I'm, I'm going to show you that we did in, in the lab, you, you'll see how, how rich in, in chlorophyll they are. And they're packed very, very close together. Now, um, in some, most dicots, uh, the palisade layer and the mesophyll uh, are basically, can be kind of um, separated. We have a spongy mesophyll and then the palisade layer. Um, and, and in others, in other plants, uh, they're not so differentiated. You really can't see the difference too much between the palisade layer and the mesophyll. The mesophyll is, is basically the palisade layer as well as this stuff right here. These, um, these more, um, I guess, loosely structured uh, cells, they're also loaded with chloroplasts. And this is called the spongy layer or the spongy mesophyll. And they too help with uh, production of sugars and oxygen. But uh, in some plants, there isn't much of a differentiation between the two of them. But the spongy mesocells create all this airspace in here. This airspace is really important because this serves as the area where oxygen and CO2 are exchanged. Obviously, the oxygen is needed by uh, uh, is produced by these cells, and then as it they're produced in these cells, they come out through. Uh, these stomates. The stomate or stomata, depending on what book you read, stomata, are just openings. And they are controlled primarily by these guard cells right here. So the guard cells are the things that will create the size of the hole. Now we've been doing a lab 
um, that is measuring some of those pressures. And what happens, like for instance, when wind blows across the leaves? And what happens when the temperature in the room goes up? We've been doing some of those labs. I'm not going to tell you exactly what, what we found, but I will say this, that uh, depending on the weather conditions, it's going to dictate how much water is pumped basically into these guard cells. The more water is pumped into it, the less open it's going to be, the more water it will retain. And also more oxygen as well. So the CO2, on the other hand, is obviously uh, brought back into the cell so it can go into uh, the chloroplast and the mesophyll and the palisade layers. The young song heroes in the leaf are probably, I would, I would consider, the vascular bundles. We have kind of two um, kinds of tissues there, the xylem and the phloem. The xylem, what it's going to be taking, is going to be taking primarily the water and nutrients from the roots and then conduct it or, or move it uh, through all parts of the plant, in particular the leaves. And um, because it's not a very large molecules here, they are really moving, uh, the xylem are going to be these little guys right in here, all the smaller cells. Now, the phloem, on the other hand, is going to be taking the products that the leaf makes, things like uh, glucose, and then, of course, as they're combined to, to, to make cellulose and others, it makes them longer chains. So the glucose is relatively a, a larger about a uh, larger material has to move, larger molecules. So they also need a little bit larger uh, tubes to, to move through. That's what these are all about right here. So the phloem are, are the, the larger vessels because they're larger particles, the larger molecules it has to move, whereas the xylem moves primarily the water. So the phloem will take all of the, uh, the sugar uh, and the glucoses, or the glucose and the sugars, and then put them in the phloem, and then they're transported to the rest of, of, of the, the cells, up in the canopy and down in the roots, um, and just all over the plant. Whereas the xylem takes it from the roots, the water in particular, and moves it up through the trunks uh, to the nodes, to the petioles, to the leaves, and the canopy. So it's a pretty pretty cool system, and um, it's, it's, it's amazing how, like, for instance, in a 379-foot tree, it can move the water up. And then my question is, how does it get back down without kind of falling apart and all of that just rushing to, to the roots? So we're going to be talking a little bit more about that, and you're going to be doing some research as well. So what I'd like to do next um, is I'd like to take a look at these uh, the, the, the mid layers and their, um, and their looser arrangement. As I said before, the palisade layer as well as the um, spongy layers, all of those... Um, are, are some in some plants undifferentiated, and but they're packed. They're rich with chloroplasts. And then, as I said before, uh, we kind of focus on the, the phloem. The phloem tends to be the little bit larger vessels, where the smaller ones are the, the xylem. And you can see in this particular picture, I believe it's a, it's a dicot. Uh, the the upper portions of it right here. This is the xylem. And the xylem, of course, in, in this one, um, that's the one that uh, basically moves the water because they're smaller vessels. Whereas the larger ones, the phloem, right in here, those, are, of course, are going to be moving the things like the sugars and the glucoses. Okay, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the, uh, the leaf pore system, and that's the guard cells and the stomate. The, the guard cells are highly reactive to the to the water that's being going to be pumped into it. And as it's pumped into it, it's going to shut down the stomate. Like for instance on windy days, it doesn't want to lose a lot of, of water vapor, so what'll happen, these things will swell and shut this so it's not quite as um, accessible. And then on nice days where uh, everything is flush, then of course water vapor can move in or out. And the same with the oxygen. 